Welcome everyone to another edition of Play It Through, and on this edition is Bubble Bobble, brought to us by Taito. One of my all-time favorite games, and one of the best co-op games available on the NES. Bubble Bobble was originally released in arcades in 1986, and saw many, many ports to many home consoles and computer systems, but just like many, the one that's most memorable is the one on the original NES. So here we go with Bubble Bobble for the Nintendo Entertainment System. The way that Bubble Bobble works is you have the square rooms and your goal is to destroy every enemy that is on the screen. You do this by spitting out bubbles, and if an enemy comes in contact with your bubble, they get encapsulated by it, and if you pop that bubble with them in it, you end up defeating them. You'll notice a lot throughout the run, it'll look like I get really close to an enemy where I should probably end up dying, and they end up dying instead because I ended up throwing out a bubble at the last second, so they don't even really end up getting encapsulated, the bubble just pops immediately as soon as they're in it. Bubble Bobble is very much an arcade style of game. You're going for a high score, there's plenty of extra lives you can earn for getting a certain number of points, and there's plenty of things to collect. Every time you defeat an enemy, when they end up landing solidly on ground again, they end up leaving behind an item. You can collect this item, which will end up giving you points, and certain point values, of course, are giving you extra lives. Another thing you can do is bunch enemies together into a big cluster inside the bubbles, and popping this big group of them ends up giving you a ton of extra points, as well as usually ends up summoning a letter or two that ends up spelling out the word EXTEND. Just overall one of the weirdest words for a bonus, I guess extend as in like an extended life or an extra life, because that's what you end up getting rewarded if you're able to spell out the word. You also automatically complete whatever stage you're on when you end up getting that last letter. There are also plenty of other items that end up showing up. Basically, after a few moments on a stage, a random item will appear in a couple of different locations. These can end up being power-ups, such as ones that give you a speed boost or allow you to throw out your bubbles a bit farther. You also have one that will allow you to throw out fireballs, which can be very useful for taking out multiple enemies at the same time, as well as you have ones that will destroy all the enemies, or basically defeat all the enemies instantly, like one that causes water to fill up the entire screen killing them all, or another one where the entire screen shakes like an earthquake and they all end up getting defeated. You also have ones that end up initiating a bonus-like game, one where basically everything starts flashing a weird blue color, and then you can kind of like run really quickly and run over the enemies to defeat them, and another one where all of these different food items fill up the screen, and your goal is to collect them within the time limit, and it ends up actually being a competitive part of the game if you're playing multiplayer, whoever ends up collecting the most ends up getting a bonus. While I'm not positive by any means, since I played the game a lot of times to get this video done, I think I do show off all the power-ups, or at least most of them, throughout the course of both playthroughs. One thing that I haven't really talked about yet is the fact that the game has a lot of levels. In fact, there's a hundred levels and then you're able to beat the game, but you're not getting the true ending or the best ending. Instead, you have to find a secret warp that's located in level 99, which allows you to end up going to the bonus stages. Then, defeating the boss at the end of that, only with two players alive at the time the boss is defeated, you end up getting the good ending, and then you end up getting a password, which leads to a second quest. Basically all the levels again, different color schemes for a lot of stages, and different enemy placements. After completing the 100 levels, as well as the bonus stages again, as well as having Bub and Bob both alive at the end of the boss fight, you end up getting the final or best ending to the game, and that's exactly what we're going to be doing in this run. We're going to do a complete good ending of the first playthrough, and then use the password to go into the second quest and do another full good ending there. A lot of the strategy when it comes to Bubble Bobble is playing the levels repeatedly and you kind of learn some nice setups, or at least the way that the enemies fall in, and you can kind of preset yourself up at a good location to start getting the advantage. You also start to learn the way that the enemies are going to usually end up reacting in the stages, where it comes to jumping up ledges or sneaking out of very tight spaces. 
Also to help you out in stages are some specialty bubbles, including these, these water bubbles that when you pop them will send a thing of water crashing down through the stage from level to level and taking out any enemy that it ends up running into. You can use them here like you can see to kind of pass through this heart object and take out a few of them inside, though it's not exactly the easiest thing to make sure that you land hits on them. While Bubble Bubble will go on to spawn many sequels and spin-offs and all kinds of side games, overall though, it wasn't the first game in the franchise. It would actually be Check and Pop. It was uh, another game that was released in arcades and a lot of the same systems that Bubble Bubble was released on, uh, but unfortunately it never came to North America. But a couple of the enemies, the ones known as Monsta and the other one known as Meta or Stoner, they were both actually in Check and Pop and then ended up being brought over to Bubble Bobble. Speaking of the enemy names, they actually are quite different depending upon which version you're playing and they've been changed up over the years, so you may find various versions of the different enemies with different names attached to them. There's actually an enemy roll call at the end of the best ending of the game. Uh, however, the way that they're spelled is kind of a broken English version of their Japanese names, so it just ends up looking weird and they end up making the names harder to pronounce than what they actually should be. Growing up, another thing I loved about Bubble Bobble was the level designs themselves. A lot of them are kind of nonsensical. Some of them are shaped like items that are clearly visible, and then other times you're just like, what exactly were they trying to go for? Uh, I remember seeing ones with the Japanese characters, for example, and not really knowing how Japanese writing looked at the time. That was always a bit confusing. As well as you have levels that include like an English word out of the blue that doesn't really seem to have much to do with whatever level you're currently on. These guys here are the most basic enemy in the game. They don't really have much of an ability, though they can end up kind of like stopping in their movements and end up doing a jump or two up a few platforms trying to get back in your way. However, unlike a lot of the enemies we gotta deal with, they don't have a weird moving pattern and don't have any kind of projectile that they're gonna be firing at us. Those guys were also supposed to be in Check and Pop along with the Monstas and the Metas that we talked about earlier, but unfortunately they end up getting cut, but their sprite actually still appears in the original game. The Monstas, or the Belugas, whatever you want to call them, the Flying Whales, uh, are another one of the trickier enemies in the game. You have to fight a lot of them throughout. You have to kind of learn the pattern of how they move and being able to bounce off the different ledges and corners of rooms, and to kind of time the trajectory so that you're able to be in the right spot to take them out when they end up coming towards you. Now right here we end up grabbing the last letter for the extend, so you can see here we have all the letters flashing in the background and you get the one up, and then we just move on to the next level. The little guys in the white robes are known as Metas, or also known as Stoners, interesting enough. They do have red eyes, so it kind of does make sense. Either way, they end up throwing fireballs towards you. They move similar as far as like just kind of walking back and forth and jumping as the uh, classic little wind-up guys do, but at the same time, those dangerous fireballs can kind of come out at any moment. One of my favorite enemies, or most nostalgic for me, are these guys right here. They're known as the Hullabaloons, and in this game and the older versions, they're known as the Pool Pools. Basically, as a kid, I always thought for some reason they looked like little teddy bears with propellers. I don't know why that's what my brain saw, but it always did. And this level in particular is a lot of fun, or really annoying, depending upon how you look at it. We're gonna line up and use the lightning bolt bubbles that come up the left and right sides to take out all the enemies in the center. Now, you can use the ledges here as well as, of course, jumping on your bubbles. One thing that I didn't mention is with the bubbles, you probably have noticed that you're able to jump off of them. The way you do this, though, is holding down the jump button. So you hit it once and then hold down the button to keep repeating your jumps over and over again on the bubbles. 
Now, the item I just grabbed, as you can see, caused the enemy that was on the right side to kind of just immediately fall down. They start flashing a blue color, and you basically just have to get to them and run them over. And this way, you're able to easily clear out levels by just kind of running into the enemies. Though, sometimes they can get in places that end up being annoying, and eventually they will end up breaking out of the fog if you don't defeat them quick enough. Amongst all the weird level designs, or just kind of basic ones, you also have ones that are shaped like all the different enemies in the game, and a lot of times you're going to be facing off with a group of those enemies in those particular levels. Here's one of those weird levels. It says popcorn at the top, and at first glance you may not quite understand, but basically what it is is you're in a frying pan, and you have these little flaming bubbles that you're able to burst that cause fire to go out when they end up landing on the ground. And basically you're supposed to put these on the bottom part of the frying pan, and then get the enemies to kind of go in there, and then they end up popping. Yeah, just really strange. Thankfully, the next level right after that is a lot more easy to comprehend. All you need to do, though, is kind of work your way up a little bit, and then hit more of these little fire bubbles uh, that cause a decent amount of flame to be on the bottom portion of the level, and all the enemies will eventually walk into the flames. One thing that I haven't talked about is if you're in a level and you're taking too long to complete it, you're unable to defeat all the enemies, and you haven't died yet, Eventually, after a certain amount of time, you end up having the words hurry up appear, flashing across the screen for a few seconds, and then you have Baron Von Blubba who ends up showing up, or also known as Skell Monster. Uh, basically, it's a skeleton version of the monsters, or the whale enemies that we've been fighting, and he moves around the room, eventually chasing you down and speeding up faster and faster until eventually he ends up running into you, or you end up dying in another way. Uh, when you do die, though, it resets the clock, and you're able to continue you with the normal enemies at their normal pace again. This is a fun level for sure. We're able to kind of go to the right here, and if you time it right, mashing the attack button and send out a lot of bubbles, you can get all of them into bubbles and pop them all for a lot of extra bonus points. Sometimes you get a lot more than uh, what I end up getting there. I only got a little bit uh, compared to what you can end up getting sometimes from that particular level. Here we have uh, another one of the stages where it's an enemy, and you have the level that shapes like that enemy. Stage 30 is a great nostalgic stage because it's very frustrating. As a kid, I had a hard time timing the exact point where you should end up attacking the enemies when you're kind of dropping into these little pits or little pockets. Uh, you can, of course, use the electricity, which is the smarter idea if you're able to time it, but of course you don't have a whole lot of time to work with, so unless you have a friend that can really kind of help speed levels up, uh, you kind of have to just kind of wing it and jump into these little pits and time it just right so you're able to hit these guys as they're bouncing back and forth without accidentally running into you. Pretty simple level here, we just have these guys that are going to work their way down square to square. Because of the way they go back and forth left and right, it can be hard to get in a nice good spot to take them all out easily if you're just playing by yourself. Now here's a fun little one, you have this kind of centered chamber that all these guys get dropped into. There's a few ways you can kind of enter, you can enter in from the sides. Usually I wait for them to kind of separate and then drop down the center, taking out as many of them inside of the thing as I can before then heading back up to the top portion to hopefully be able to finish them off. For this stage, our goal is mostly to get the enemies to the right side. It'll really help you out get them into that little chamber where that guy just jumped up. When you throw enemies in the bubbles in this stage, they immediately go up just a little bit to that spot where when they end up popping, if you don't pop them, uh, they will end up being automatically in this little chamber thing. 
Uh, something you'll find and is a big part of strategy with Bubble Bobble's levels uh, is the current, the stream of air that is blowing these bubbles around. Uh, wherever they end up eventually leaving the bubbles to kind of cluster, and sometimes it's multiple places depending upon where you fire the bubble, uh, a lot of times that is uh, key as far as being able to kind of master the stages. This level is similar to the one we just did just a few moments ago, except you have smaller little blocks here uh, that they end up falling down, but we're able to kind of easily cluster them at the bottom and take them all out safely. And next level, it just says jump at the top. It is a level where you will have to jump a little bit, but still, other than that, it's a little less obvious what was going on here. Either way, you can bounce up the left or right side using your bubbles, and once you're up here, you have to be careful. The enemies bunch up pretty easily, uh, so uh, you may end up accidentally clipping one as you're trying to jump up. Now for this level, you have a giant question mark in the middle, and then all these coilies end up appearing, or bane bows, or pogos. Either way, they kind of like hop and bounce, they have springs on them, and they're not to be confused with the Cubert enemy, also known as Coily. Now, level 37 is similar to some of the other ones we've been dealing with, where you can kind of get the enemies into a small area on the right side and drop the fireball bubbles uh, onto them. But instead, I end up getting all the letters I need, and we end up spelling EXTEND again. Now, the next stage has a bunch of coilies bouncing around the bottom of the screen. We're gonna work our way around the top, shoot some bubbles so that we can get over to wherever uh, one of those fire bubbles are. Make sure that you have another fire bubble or something else that you'll be able to bounce off of once you end up breaking the one bubble, so that you don't end up falling on top of all the coilies that you're about to destroy. Uh, you may have to do this twice, one on one side and one on the other in order to get rid of them all. Uh, it can be a bit finicky as far as the fire, but a pretty solid and easy strategy. Now, this is one of many stages that's just an absolute pain, and the main reason uh, is because you have to kind of like start off on one side and work your way all the way up, and then slowly over through all these enemies onto the opposite side, uh, and if you're playing single player, it can be difficult to get into the area, uh, the starting area, for example over here on the right. This guy would be really hard to get to uh, if I wasn't lucky enough to currently have the cane, uh, so I can throw out a lot of those fireballs. Uh, there's a lot of levels like this that are set up and designed throughout the game. During this stage, you have water as well as the electricity bubbles, uh, but I'm going to end up hitting this giant firecracker thing, which basically just explodes and kills every enemy on screen, so we're able to easily move on. Now, for this level, you have all these enemies at the kind of very bottom of the screen. There are some fireball bubbles you can pop in order to kind of fill up the bottom screen to take out most of the enemies as they're bouncing around. Uh, but because of the really short area, it's kind of a small playing field that can make the level a bit difficult to beat. The next level is another one shaped like an enemy. Uh, these are the Incendos, or also known as the Hydegons. Uh, these guys are pretty tricky. Uh, they're able to uh, throw out fireballs pretty fast. It can be really uh, difficult to get out of the way. Uh, as soon as they start firing, you're pretty much going to end up getting hit by it if you're uh, just a step or two away. This level is similar to the one I was just dealing with and complaining about a few moments ago uh, because we have to work our way through the small chamber on the left uh, and then kind of get through these big pits and finally over trying to take out the same enemies I started with on my side uh, but on that side. But thankfully, uh, I get uh, lucky where I'm able to hit one of the lightning bolts so that makes things a little bit easier. I just have to worry about this one enemy that I was lucky also to be able to hit with the lightning bolts. It doesn't always work out that way. Uh, a lot of times, instead of risking the death, I will just keep falling and hitting the lightning bolts until the uh, Baron ends up showing up and taking me out. 
This level, you have SOS written at the top of the screen. I ended up grabbing the green cross item. Uh, it was behind another item. Uh, but grabbing this causes lightning to fly down and destroy every enemy on screen. Uh, like I mentioned earlier in the video, there is a lot of different ways to pretty much destroy everything on screen in this game. The next stage is another enemy one, and it's the one for Coily. A bunch of them are going to bounce around on the left and right sides, eventually falling kind of through the structure a little bit, allowing you uh, to be able to kind of slowly pick off a few of them. Now, uh, sometimes the ones get stuck inside, like you can see the ones that are kind of stuck inside, but eventually they kind of work their way out, uh, and usually you'll have to chase down one or two uh, that kind of remain on the very top. Uh, they kind of get in a loop like this guy right here, where he just kind of keeps moving back and forth, left and right, not really going anywhere, but able to take him out and move on to level 46. Level 46 has the word ouch at the top. Um, I don't know if that means just because this level is going to be difficult, uh, but basically it's a whole giant snake of coilies that bounce, uh, you know, rhythmically together. And it's kind of fun to kind of pick them off, and uh, you got to time it really well to get them all easily uh, before they end up popping or trying to get out. Now this level you have platforms on the left and right sides, the enemies will work their way down, eventually going through the pits or openings at the bottom, popping out of the top, and there is a chance they'll end up coming towards the center, falling into the big pit where you'll be able to use the flames. Enemies don't always move the same though, so of course you may have to track down them and do it the hard way, uh, but uh, usually not too difficult to do. For this room, you have three uh, enemies on the left and right sides. Uh, pretty simple stuff overall. Uh, usually a cool item appears on the top or on the left side, as you can see with the shoe and the mushroom at the top. Nothing really that spectacular, um, but another room done. Now, this is where the real fun begins in Bubble Bobble, because the invaders start showing up, also known as Super Sockets. These little robots, all they can do is move left and right, they can't jump, uh, but they fire lasers down right below them. Also, the enemy known as Drunk, or Willy Whistle, depending upon what version you're playing, uh, these are basically smaller versions of what ends up being the final boss of the game as well. They throw beer bottles, so the Drunk name is appropriate, but weird that that's always been their name from back on the NES. After introducing the guys, though, in the previous stage, you now have a giant pyramid with all of the invaders. This is a very uh, nostalgic and infamous level. In the upper right corner is an umbrella. If you grab it, you'll automatically teleport a few levels ahead. Uh, I'm not going to grab the umbrella in any of the playthroughs, as I wanted to make sure that I at least touch down uh, in every one of the stages in the game. The strategy, as you can see, I use is to kind of work your way up the left side of the pyramid, then go all the way down and work your way up the right side before finally taking out the center, uh, final one of the invaders. It can be difficult to get that kind of exact jumping down, uh, but a little bit of practice is a, a level that you can easily do without dying. The next stage, you have a whole bunch of the drunks. Uh, they're just kind of running around. Uh, they can bunch up, and they do have their beer bottles they'll throw out, and because that's kind of sporadic uh, and a bit fast, it's difficult to uh, kind of get out of the way a lot of times, so you want to cake them out uh, as quickly as you can. Now, level 52, uh, this is another one that has water uh, bubbles, and we're going to immediately get to the top of the screen and use these since they move really fast, uh, and we're able to wipe out the enemies pretty fast in this level. Level 53, a pretty simple platform kind of stage, though an invader drops down the uh, center to begin, and then all the other enemies kind of follow through, allowing you to easily uh, hit a lot of them. Now, down here we get the uh, blue cross, the water cross, I guess? I don't know. Either way, the entire screen fills up with blue, taking out anybody who is still alive, other than, of course, us. Now, for this level, we have to kind of decide if we're going to go up the left or right side. We're going to start off by taking out all the drunks at the bottom, uh, before going up and deal with the stoners. 
Kind of funny. Unfortunately, they weren't both named these on the NES. Uh, only the drunks were named that on the NES, and the uh, other guys were named stoners later on. But still, kind of funny that you have stoner and drunks that you have to battle. In the next level, you're gonna have a bunch of the Zen Chans, or just known as Zen, the wind-up guys on the right, uh, and a few of the Maitas, the stoners, uh, that are also gonna quickly pop down. Pretty simple level. Uh, don't worry though, things are gonna ramp up in difficulty pretty quickly uh, after we get through level 56, which is one of the levels shaped like enemies. This time it's the Beluga, or the Monstra. Uh, either way, uh, you have a bunch of other enemies, though, you have to deal with during this stage, which makes it a bit difficult, uh, especially, uh, the Incendo likes to kind of run around and consistently go in a loop with the pit, uh, so you have to kind of get over there and, uh, kind of stop his never-ending loop. However, it's the next level where the, uh, problems begin. This is the most infamous level of all of Bubble Bobble, and that's level 57. Here you have a bunch of invaders at the top of the screen, and it's just a big open area. Your goal is to set a whole bunch of bubbles, uh, take out the monster as soon as you can, uh, and then send out a bunch of bubbles. You want to stand about halfway uh, between the left wall and the center of the screen, and fire just enough, and you have to kind of bounce up the edge of the bubble, which is difficult to do. Uh, if you're just slightly off, you end up popping all the bubbles, and you have to restart the whole process. Uh, you don't have a lot of time to deal with. Uh, and because of this entire concept, uh, this level uh, became quite uh, infamous for being one of the most difficult stages in this game, and potentially is still the most difficult stage in the game. Now for this level, you have some uh, nicely lined up enemies that kind of move in synchronization, uh, but we're going to disrupt that pretty quickly, uh, decide where you kind of want to stand, uh, usually on the right side, and I can kind of bubble a few of them real quick and try to quickly get over there and pop them, uh, because they don't stay in the bubble very long. Uh, as you progress with the game, the duration of the enemy stay in the bubbles lessens, uh, but at the same time, it can also be sporadic. Some levels will still last a little bit longer than on uh, the level just previous to it. Now, this level is pretty straightforward, not a lot going on, but you have the big letters F, A, 10 in the middle. I'm not sure what that's supposed to mean, but it's not one of those things that ends up standing out. Now, this is another level with a lot of invaders. They're going to come down pretty quickly. Uh, time it as they're passing above the upper pit on the left side, so you can drop down the pit after the lasers pass. Uh, and if you quickly uh, do that, you can kind of catch up to the invaders and take them out with bubbles. Or, you can get lucky and end up getting the item I do, and uh, that way I just kind of like run them over real fast. Right after that, though, is a level that's shaped like an invader, and this is a difficult level. Uh, you gotta kind of get around and be at the right spots. Uh, take out all the other invaders, uh, pretty simply, and then when you get to this spot, you kind of get it under the laser, and then jump up and barely be able to grab them. Um, and then you're gonna pretty much do the same thing, though, of course, being the only one left, the laser's coming out a lot quicker, so this will be a bit more difficult. Uh, but there, I'm able to kind of get up there and just barely hit him. Uh, so, pretty challenging level, though, if you don't know uh, that you're able to kind of get under and stand on those certain spots. Lots of little platforms and a bunch of invaders and drunks falling down just kind of jump up and get into the fray and start firing at the bubbles quickly. Uh, the faster you take them out, the better. Uh, there is the lightning bolts, but they really don't end up helping much on this stage. Now, level 63 is kind of like a discount version of level 57 as far as just this one standard platform uh, with a bunch of invaders on it firing down, but it's, of course, very easy to get up here. Uh, it's basically kind of like, oh, well, was level 57 too hard? Well, let's dial it down a little bit. Let's make it a little bit easier for you. Now, for this level, like a giant water faucet, we're going to just drop on down this pit, and usually there should be a water bubble that has shown up and you can pop it and easily just take out all the invaders before they even end up doing anything. Right after that, you have another stage where you have a bunch of invaders on this top portion firing down. It's very difficult to get into the center here, so try to take out uh, the other enemies surrounding the left side, climb on up, take out all of the invaders, and then do a little bit of mop-up duty to finish off the rest of the enemies.
Level 66 is a bit weird. It's kind of like a sand thing going on. It's a weird bunch of false walls that you can kind of like walk through. Uh, and so that way it can be a bit confusing. Uh, there are some fire bubbles that you can drop down that can take out some enemies if you're having a, a bit of difficulty seeing. Uh, as well as the other guys kind of like bouncing around the room, which also become a little bit difficult to see because of the camouflage. Not quite as easy as the level we faced off with just a bit ago, but still much easier than level 57. Here in 67, we just kind of get up on top or fall down the pit, hitting one of the fireball bubbles uh, to destroy most of the enemies that end up appearing uh, on that platform. Now for the next stage, this is one of those ones that also annoys me. It's similar to that one that uh, bothers me earlier on, where we kind of have to fall down the left side, then get to the center, and then to the right, uh, which can be difficult uh, to kind of get through, especially in a nice, timely manner. Uh, a lot of times you'll notice in these areas, I'm kind of like sneaking my way through the wall. Because uh, I don't want to go too far out so that I'm exposed and I end up getting hit easy. Uh, I kind of just want to have my head poking out just enough uh, so that I'm able to hit an enemy with a bubble without uh, them, or at least them having a lot less chance of hitting me. Level 69 has some Japanese text at the top. You have a bunch of coilies, uh, as well as the stoners that uh, will immediately probably turn around. So try to take out the coilies fast, and then the stoners are probably also going to be right on your tail. So you would only have a couple of seconds to kind of react to everything going on and just kind of like mash the bubble button to try to get rid of them. Level 70 will have us climb up a bunch of bubbles and then drop down some fire bubbles onto all the little coilies, kind of just bouncing around. Very, very simple level. Now for level 71, uh, you have kind of the big things on the left and right side, a little bit easier than some of the other levels we've done like this. Uh, then you got the big center part. Now dropping down here can be difficult. Uh, there's no elemental uh, bubbles that are going to help you out, so you kind of just have to drop down and get lucky and time it uh, so that you're able to take out all the coilies. Once you've cleared out them, if there's a couple other guys still floating around like these, uh, then you can slowly kind of get in that right spot and be able to pick them off. Seventy-two is high-tech, apparently. Uh, similar to Ouch from earlier, you have a bunch of the coilies bouncing together, uh, and then you uh, also have a couple of the floating guys that we're just gonna kind of quickly get rid of. Level 73, we drop on down, we're going to take out some incendos at the top, and then that's when the elements start showing up. You have the water as well as lightning. Uh, you can use the water to take out the enemies through these small little cracks, uh, and then if you can get the lightning bolts to go to the left side and drop down, you'll be able to take out the guys in the little kind of alcoves here, but since they're not coming over here, we're just going to go in there and take them out ourselves. Level 74 is one of the easiest in the late part of the game. Just drop on down here. Your bubbles pop really quickly once an enemy's in it, but other than that, just take out all four of the easiest enemy in the game and move on. Right after that, though, is a whole level full of Incendos. A bunch of them we're going to drop on down, take out the ones on the very bottom level first, and then the next set will drop down, take out those guys, then work your way up the little platforms and take out the ones that inevitably will end up being in these small little things. Next up is more invaders coming down, and since they are going both down the left and right, I start off by dropping down the pit. That way I'm above them, I have a little bit of advantage, because I can take out a couple maybe, uh, before they end up going all the way down to the bottom and through. 
uh, but still I'm unable to run uh, for too long and end up dying. Thankfully though, this is one of those games where if you do end up dying, you start right where you are, uh, and even if you do game over while you lose your score, uh, you can end up putting in a password, use the continue screen, and just go right back into wherever you ended up uh, dying. So it's very fast to get back into the action in the game, and because you have endless amounts of continues, it encourages me to keep playing and probably why I beat Bubble Bobble so many times back in the day. This stage, as you've probably seen, is a bit of a nuisance. You have big pits at the bottom, uh, and a lot of me is kind of just bouncing around a big open room. Thankfully, the elements show up, and they really help you out. There's a level in the bonus set of stages we'll do much later on. It's just a big, empty, open area. So this is a little bit of practice for what ends up being uh, in that stage much later. Now, this level is a pain. You want to take out as many invaders on the first loop as possible. Once they start coming back down, it can be difficult to get away from any lasers from any of the ones that ended up surviving the first onslaught. Now for 79, you have to start off by jumping on your bubbles, build your way up into the center of the room, uh, wait for the whale, take him out, and then take out the next two whales on the bottom. They will eventually come up to you. It may take a few moments, they may end up going up the wrong one, uh, but if you see the opening, of course, you can just drop off the platform and finish them off if you need to. Uh, then take out the two top invaders, and then finally finish off the stage with the bottom two. Show Taro. I'm once again kind of confused at what was going on during this level, uh, but basically we just have a whole bunch of the Zen Chans, or Zens, whatever they are, uh, bouncing around this room. Now, we do have another one of those hearts. I am going to grab it, uh, though I defeated most of the enemies already at this point. I'll use that to kind of beat the ones that are still alive. Eighty-one is one of those levels I always personally hate it because I always had trouble getting into the center. Uh, start off by getting on top and then take out both of the belugas, the whales, uh, and then you kind of have to time the bubble uh, in the right spot so that they actually rise and then bounce off of them. The game is very finicky when it comes to bouncing on bubbles when they're kind of transitioning between the bottom and top of the screen, uh, and a lot of times they just end up popping. Uh, so it can be very frustrating to kind of get in here, and once you're in here, you want to make sure that you don't end up dying, so slowly work your way over, taking out each invader, uh, and then taking out uh, the monster as they either come at you, or uh, wait for them to be last, and then finish them off. Thankfully, a much easier stage to navigate right after that. You have a couple of drunks start off by popping off uh, the top platforms. Very easy to deal with them. Uh, but then the next ones kind of just stay in these little cubbies. They will eventually jump out, though. Uh, you basically up to you whether or not you want to wait for them to kind of jump out and take them out the bottom level and then go up to the invader. Or while you're waiting for them to come out, go up and deal with the invader and then drop on down and deal with the rest of the ones that are now at the uh, bottom of the screen. As we drop into the next level, you can see we have to get to the center to take out this invader, but we're going to first deal with the drunks on the left and right sides. Uh, just be careful if you cross over, don't go across the bottom unless you're watching out for the laser. Uh, it can be a little bit of a challenge though, trying to take out all these drunks, uh, just kind of piling up uh, with their projectiles especially. If you take out all the drunks though, that of course is going to make the invader quite unhappy since he's the last one left. and. Now I gotta try to get in there and, uh, be able to try to take him out. More invaders up next, and the first two kind of drop down here on the left. We're gonna take them out, and then drop down the pit as the other ones... Uh, start to descend down as well, uh, and you can usually kind of like pick off each one of them uh, by just standing on this platform. You gotta have a keen eye to make sure you're on the right side uh, as they're coming through the bottom of the pit, but pretty easy level. Right after that is PMDC. 
This is another level with invaders. They're just kind of moving back and forth. They will fall off, of course, the right side. There's enough of a space, but we can just take them all out before they even get a chance to bounce off the wall once. This level always confused me because of the Darius at the top. I didn't realize that that actually is a Taito game until much, uh, much later. But this stage is just filled with a lot of the whale enemies that can be very difficult to defeat because when you get them into the bubble, as you can see, they rise up and they pop just a few seconds later. So you have to be really fast in order to actually get rid of them. The next level is STA. The pull poles start bouncing around. There's some pits at the bottom. You also have water and lightning at your disposal to kind of help you take them out. The only problem is getting the water and the lightning to get into a spot where they can actually help out isn't all that easy. Now this is a pretty fun level, we're going to be using all these bubbles to blast this fire bubble all the way to the center of the screen. Just kind of keep on firing bubbles and eventually it'll move over and you'll be over top where we need it, where we can just kind of pop it and burn all the enemies below. Level 89 has a bunch of the high gongs at the top. Uh, there is the fire bubbles coming up, but you can probably take out all the enemies way before the fire uh, bubbles actually make it high enough so you can actually use them. Level 90 looks similar to level 57, but a lot easier because we can actually bounce up the left or right wall to get up to the top platform, where we're able to easily just blast down these invaders. Uh, I ended up leaving the whale alive, so I will have to kind of like double back down to the bottom part, which is also pretty easy to do. And uh, then we're moving on to 91. For this level, this big giant square thing is set up with a lot of pits. When we first enter the stage, we're going to fall and just hit a little bit on the D-pad to the right, and we'll be able to take out the first few enemies. Uh, and then we kind of get up here, we're going to make sure that we don't go directly over one of these holes, because that's where you'll end up falling down. But we want to try to pop the fire bubbles right above the pit so it takes out the enemies easily. For this level, we're going to quickly drop down into this pit. If you do it fast enough, you can hit these water bubbles and destroy a lot of the enemies. Unfortunately, I keep falling and end up running into one of the guys and end up dying. Uh, but the firecracker thing shows up and I'm able to hit that to take out the rest of them. The next level is a really small area that you have to fight a bunch of these pull poles. Uh, you don't have a lot of uh, room for error, that is for sure. Thankfully, there is the lightning bubbles that will uh, help you out if you're able to pop them at those right moments. Uh, but you kind of just want to stay low and try to easily take out a couple of them as they're kind of slowly working their way down to the bottom. Next up, KZM, whatever that stands for, maybe one of the initials of a programmer that worked on the game. Uh, we're going to use one of these lightning bubbles, though, to destroy a lot of the enemies. Really fun, and one of the easiest way to get multiple enemies hit with one lightning bolt is uh, in this stage. Now, level 95, we're going to start off by bouncing up these bubbles up to the top and take out the drunks, as well as you can see the pull poles will kind of fall down. Here we get another one of the uh, green crosses that show up. We're just going to ignore that cross and just take out the last enemy. Level 96 is my least favorite level in this entire game. And the reason for this is these invaders have always been so annoying to try to destroy them. Uh, you start off with three on each side. You can take out a couple of them before one of them eventually will get to this little pit, basically, and just sit there and keep firing. On the opposite side, you have three other ones that will also build up into the pit, and it's very difficult to time the jumps 
uh, and the bubble attacks in order to not die, uh, but also being able to take out these guys. Level 97, thankfully, is a lot easier to manage. There are the lightning bubbles. Uh, I just kind of wait here on the bottom and for all these enemies to just fall off the top, coming right towards me. Uh, and then I just have to kind of do a little bit of mop-up duty, taking out the two Zen guys. Ninety-eight is a pretty simple stage. It's just a lot of drunks that are in a very small little area with multiple platforms. Uh, it can be a bit difficult sometimes to get up to the platform they are and hit them when out getting hit by one of the uh, bottles. But uh, the next level is the very important level, uh, and this one will lead to some game overs potentially, especially if you're playing single player. It's very hard. But basically, what you have to do is you have to grab a couple of items before they disappear, and of course, without dying and without completing the level, because if you beat the level, it instantly ends up ending and all the items disappear. Um, so what you need to do is quickly get all the way over here very fast and grab this crystal, this egg-looking thing. Once you have the crystal, this gate appears where the one pull pull is in the bottom portion of the screen. What you have to do is kind of like bounce up and manipulate through the platform and hit that gate. If you make contact with the gate, uh, you will automatically move on to the next level. Uh, but if you, you know, end up hitting the pole pole, you'll end up dying. And you have a very small window of time to get to these items before they disappear. And a death, or two deaths especially, is uh, going to be a no-go. You just have to kind of like game over and then try it again. Now, if you're wondering why we did all that... If you beat the level normally, you will go on to the boss, and if you defeat the boss, you'll get an ending, but it's the bad ending. Even if you have two players alive, you'll still get the bad ending. So you have to get that crystal in order to actually make it to these bonus levels, and this leads to the same boss fight, but this time the actual real ending, or the good ending. A bunch of the levels are relatively standard, they really don't take any kind of different approach than anything we've seen throughout the normal game, in fact they're kind of tame in comparison, and then a few of them have those few uh, spots in them, including the one coming up where it's just a completely empty room that you just keep falling in. For A3, you have a whole bunch of drunks that kind of set up on this thing and they just start jumping all around. Try to keep a little bit of distance if possible so that you don't end up getting hit by their bottles. Here I end up grabbing the potion and this is the bonus game. I mentioned earlier on in the video about these bonus games that you can potentially get. They basically instantly finish a level but if you're playing the two player mode, uh, you both can compete to see who can get more of them and you get bonus points for doing it uh, and getting them all you get a perfect bonus as you can see. The next level is YK, very easy level as you can see just the Zen robots and it's a very kind of small little platform just to kind of jump up and be able to easily take them all out. Level A5 is a butterfly, I think, and there's a bunch of the pull poles kind of like bouncing around. Uh, because of the small little platforms in here, uh, it can be a bit annoying. Thankfully, one of these heart things shows up, so that makes the level go by much, much smoother. And here it is, A6, one of the best levels in the game, or weirdest levels, just because it's just a big empty room and you keep falling. There's plenty of the elemental things with the lightning bolts and the water. Uh, thankfully they don't give you fire since it wouldn't be able to land. 
Uh, and that's the same case with all the bodies of all the things you've been popping and killing during this stage. They just kind of keep falling. It's endless. Thankfully, you can escape, but their bodies are just kind of like there, like in the void of space. A7 has the complete opposite effect going on, where you have a complete screen filled with all these gray squares. Uh, you can get up to the very top and pop these water bubbles uh, that will kind of just go around. And you want to make sure you pop one on each side, because that ends up going through all the little hidden tunnels and clears out every enemy for sure. A8 has a bunch of little platforms that kind of look like girders, and a bunch of the beluga whales that are going to kind of just keep bouncing their heads pretty much off of all these small little platforms. I do get lucky again though that I'm able to get another one of the crosses, and that clears out the screen. Uh, this is pretty common though, you will get a lot of these items throughout if you're able to get to them fast enough, uh, they'll really be able to kind of clear level after level. And if you're able to get a couple of those umbrellas, you're able to kind of speed through a lot of the stages even faster. Unfortunately, jumping up here, I do end up getting hit by the Zen guy. Uh, kind of a really small, confined space. It's a bit difficult to kind of get through this area. Kind of use these bubbles to float over uh, the top of the level back to the bottom and take out the last couple of guys. Instead of going to A10, I guess, it goes over to B0, uh, and here we have this big kind of like path set up. Uh, enemies move pretty slowly through it, so they will be coming at you kind of like one-on-one, -on -one, uh, where you should be able to like, take out most of them. The only ones at the very end can be difficult because of the high guns that can potentially throw some fireballs your way. B1, the second to last of the regular levels here, uh, has a joystick in the center and a bunch of the incendus or high guns. Uh, we're going to kind of move our way over to the right here. Uh, you can potentially get the uh, fire bubbles that go over the pit so you can pop them, but sometimes it can be difficult to pop them without also falling down directly into all the high guns, which I kind of just have to take the risk. Thankfully, some other bubbles have worked their way around, so I'm able to save myself. Uh, that's why I waited those extra few moments before finally descending. It's fitting that the last level before the final boss is shaped like the final boss. The drunks just kind of file off the left and right sides. Uh, it's kind of tricky to dodge the bottle if they do throw it out, but if you get lucky and they don't throw them out, you should be able to get rid of most of them. Once you're able to clear out the final enemy, though, it's time for the final boss, or well, at least the final boss for this run of Bubble Bobble. After taking forever to finally be able to get to the guy, I take him out, and now we have the boss. Now, as soon as this battle begins, you're going to want to immediately jump up and collect the potion that's located on the platform on the very top. Once you have that, it changes all your bubbles into the lightning bubbles that we've been using throughout the game, and that's what you use to attack the boss. The boss is a giant drunk throwing tons of bottles your way. You kind of have to get used to the pattern it takes bouncing diagonally off the walls and just kind of keeps going in that. Every time you hit it though, it slows up. It's on a kind of set timer for when it decides to throw its projectiles out. So even if you freeze it a bunch, eventually after a few seconds it's going to throw out more projectiles. And this usually ends up leading to some of the deaths because you get too close to it when attacking and it throws out more bottles or you miss time the trajectory that's coming down and ends up landing on top of you. Remember, in order to get the actual good ending, you have to have both characters alive at the end of the final boss. To do this, it's very easy, but you have to have an extra life. Uh, this is, of course, if you're playing single-player mode, and if you're playing two-player mode, if you're both alive at the end, great. If one has already died and the other person has that extra life, you can do the same thing that we're going to be doing here in order to bring them back, so you can still get the good ending, at least.
Once you've delivered the last hit to the boss, don't pop it yet. Immediately pause the game and press select. This will use one of your lives and bring your friend Bob back. Once he is back, then pop the boss and enjoy the ending to Bubble Bobble. So there you have it, our first run of Bubble Bobble. Uh, that is the happy end uh, for your first playthrough. And once you're able to complete that, you've gotten the crystal, you got the happy ending. Uh, when you get the credits, you'll get a new password at the end, and you put that password in, and you can go right to the second quest, basically, uh, that we're going to be doing in just a few moments. And we're going to be doing basically the same thing we just did, uh, but we get a slightly different ending when we beat it again. Once we get done the credits, we get our new password. We're gonna go back to the title screen, get to the very bottom, and then select password, entering it. And then we're off to the second quest. You'll notice that the level isn't exactly the same. It's the same design, just has a different color scheme, which is pretty much the theme for everything going on throughout the course of the second quest. Also, the enemies have been all mixed and matched. We start immediately with one of the game's tougher enemies, and the High Gone, and we have three of them on the very first screen. Hopefully you don't end up getting hit by a fireball right away. The second screen is more of the same, with the Zens now being replaced by more of these High Gons. Level 3, we're going to jump into the middle here and hit all of them into bubbles, and then try to pop as many of them together as we can to try to get some of these letters to spawn. As we begin level 4, jump up here and take out the first guy, and then wait for the rest of them kind of start falling. Try to, once again, bundle as many together if you're able to, and then pop them all at once so that you're able to get some more of the letters. Unfortunately, we've seen two green E's, and we've only seen three letters in total. As the enemies are falling into this level, I usually like to take out the first couple on the bottom, and then try to jump up quickly and hit the water bubble that I'll be able to then pop and take out the rest of the enemies. One confusing little aspect about the Bubble Bobble series is in the sequels. While there really isn't a whole lot of story to these games, the whole releases of them has been a bit weird. You have Rainbow Islands, which is actually called the story of Bubble Bobble 2. You have its sequel, Parasol Stars, which is called Bubble Bobble 3. And then there's Bubble Bobble Part 2 for the NES. It's technically the fourth game in the Bubble Bobble series, and at the same time it was developed, there was a Game Boy game that became Bubble Bobble Jr. Thankfully, from that point on, they stopped numbering the games, but it was still kind of a free-for-all with names. You had Bubble Bobble Symphony, Bubble Bobble Memories, Bubble Bobble Double Shot, and the very infamous Bubble Bobble Revolution. If you've never heard of Bubble Bobble Revolution, it's infamous because it had a very famous glitch in level 30, which is supposed to hold a boss. The boss was unable to spawn in the North American version of the game, thus making every level past level 30 unaccessible. 
The game also has some infamously terrible looking European box art. Thankfully, they would go ahead and re-release the game, fixing the problem, as well as including a free version of Rainbow Island's Revolution. But still, it was one of those things where I have that game just because it was a broken mess and a piece of kind of gaming history. Very few games ever get released that are completely broken and unfinishable. While the second quest is definitely harder, of course with Infinite Continues it's still pretty easy to kind of get through as long as you just kind of keep persevering. And since a lot of the enemy types in the game have a lot of similar patterns, they pretty much spawn in the same spots and do a lot of the same things, so you're able to kind of set up uh, in the same spots as you would during the first quest for at least some locations. Be careful when you start up here. I'm going to jump up and attack the first one at the bottom and then kind of wait up here for the next couple of ones that kind of come my way. Uh, there's a few other ways you could probably do this a lot easier, but I kind of like picking them off when I'm standing near the top. Back to one of my favorite ones, the heart. Last time around we had all the whales in there, but this time around we have the pull poles. Uh, they're just kind of like bouncing around all happily until these water bubbles make their way to the top and then we're going to try to drop them down and at least take out a few of them. It's just, it's just fun to do. At least attempt to do a couple of them before uh, kind of jumping in there and finishing off which ones you end up missing. Now we have one of the enemy-shaped levels, but we have different enemies that we end up fighting because, of course, of all the mix-up. It can be a bit tricky to track these guys down. Uh, sometimes I'd like to get on top of the whale right here and be able to kind of blast the last couple as they're going up the right side. For level 15, I'm going to hit a couple of the enemies and then keep climbing up, uh, try to get to one of those uh, water bubbles before it ended up going away off of the top, but since it was too far over, I just take out a couple of the uh, high guns uh, and then ride one last little piece of water wave before uh, moving on to level 16. The enemies in level 16 don't have a whole lot of space to work around, but this works pretty well in your favor uh, because you'll be able to hit them uh, pretty consistently. Now, I'm going to make sure I don't end up grabbing the umbrella uh, just because, like I said, I wanted to make sure I showed every single level uh, of the game or at least touch down in every stage. When this version of Bubble Bobble was released in Japan, it was for the Famicom Disk System. And there's a lot of games that are for both the Famicom Disk System and got NES versions that end up having differences from the sound quality to other changes. Uh, but there really isn't much between the Bubble Bobble FDS version and the Bubble Bobble NES version that I'm playing here, other than some very annoying load times. Watch out for a whole bunch of the stoner enemies that file in on this level. You can work your way up or drop down to try to get to the uh, water bubbles, or just kind of take them on head on. Since there are so many platforms where they're falling down, they don't get a easy chance of hitting you with their fireballs.
For level 19, we're gonna bounce up the left side here and get on top, and any of the enemies you end up encapsulating in a bubble will pretty much go towards the center thing here, so I kind of stand on this edge, some of the enemies come to me that I'm able to hit, and one's a little bit ways off, I'm still able to kind of pull in, get a bunch of them together, pop them, potentially you'll get some letters, uh, though uh, here I end up only getting an X, and of course the last enemy is now very mad at me. Level 20, bounce on up to the top, take out the whale guys before then climbing up the left or right sides and finishing off the two high gongs. Level 21, we're going to start off by climbing up the center portion here. The other enemies are kind of working their way up anyway, so we can get up there, get a couple of them taken care of before they're really able to do anything, and then drop off to finish the last one, who unfortunately ends up hitting me, but I still defeat him at the same time. Level 22, you have the whales in the enclosed locations here instead of having the pole poles like we did before, but the premise is pretty much the same where we can use the uh, lightning bolts in order to hit them, but in this case we end up getting the heart and we're able to kind of just bulldoze our way through. Another very interesting part of the whole Bubble Bobble history is that somewhere along the years, the creators of the game lost the original arcade source code. And after they needed it, of course, to port it over to newer systems, they ended up having just to reverse engineer the actual arcade version in order to be able to do that. But even losing the source code didn't stop them from putting it on a ton of systems. There's over 15 different versions of the original Bubble Bobble out there. Back to the very friendly popcorn level with the frying pan here that we can set up some flames if we want to, but we're kind of going to do it the hard way and just take out all the flying enemies before we're able to even really do anything with the fire. Level number 26, you have the high guns here. They're going to fall on down to the very bottom, just kind of be waiting for them. If you're quick and sometimes lucky, you can defeat a lot of them real fast before they even fire out a fireball. As you begin the level, I'm going to jump up and take out the whale enemy, but you could stay on the bottom and just wait for the other guy to kind of come there first. I'm going to head over to the right though, take out these guys. Uh, by grabbing the uh, necklace, I end up summoning a whole bunch of extra letters to appear, though I don't end up getting the last ones I fully need, uh, so we have to keep on searching for more letters. Twenty-eight has all of these high guns just appear. Try to attack them as quickly as possible. Uh, it's not as easy as with the other enemies to kind of hit them all. Uh, it's still doable, but it's uh, a little bit trickier to do. Here we have the Zen enemy, but we are filled with the Stoner enemies. I guess they got stoned and just ended up wandering into the wrong enemies themed stage. Thank you. 
Now this level is pretty much the same except instead of the pole poles you have a couple of the whales going around. Uh, I usually like to take out the whales if possible first. Uh, definitely keep an eye out for them. They kind of can blend in a bit so it can be difficult when you're trying to focus on uh, the timing you need in order to take out the uh, coilies. While many more are familiar with the NES version of Bubble Bobble, the other main 8-bit system of the time, the Sega Master System, also did get a version of Bubble Bobble. Uh, it was called Final Bubble Bobble in Japan. That version was later ported over to the Sega Master System in Europe, as well as the ones in Brazil, though the North American one never saw the release. The Master System version, though, actually has a lot more levels. In fact, there's 200 levels instead of the 112 levels that we have in this version of the game, which that is actually still 12 levels more than the original arcade version, as that doesn't have the crystal as well as those bonus stages that we end up getting because we got the crystal. But along with those bonus levels, there was actually also a couple of extra boss encounters, so if you ever get a chance, check out the Sega Master System version of the game. It's definitely worth giving a look to, especially if you love this version. Level 34 is a very easy level, the Zem robots just kind of plop on down, take them all out. You do have lightning bubbles, but like it's going to take so long for it to get down, it's not worth the time. In level 35, also known as Jump, we're going to work our way up here, we're going to take out each of the high guns on the right side, then go over to the left and finish off the last two. Next up is the Great Question Mark level. Uh, it's the exact same as the original version of it, just with a different color scheme for the level. Uh, you're just kind of waiting for the coilies to fly on down and then try to take them all out. Usually I start with the left ones and then wait for the right guys to come over to my side. Level 37, jump on up here, take out the high guns on this platform and the ones just above. While you're dealing with all that, the flame bubbles will end up coming up, you may end up popping one. Uh, usually also you can kind of get up to the top and drop down the little flames to take out those guys, but just go with a more heads-on approach for the level. Level 38, start climbing on up and just basically gotta wait for the flame bubbles to come up and uh, make sure that you have some safety kind of net, safety bubble, so you can bounce off of it as you drop the flames and hopefully take out most of them. Uh, if you put the flame at the exact right spot, you can cross over or at least get it very close to that middle column, uh, which will usually trigger the uh, coilies on both sides to run right into that same flame. This level pretty much plays out the exact same as the first time around. We're going to bounce our way up after taking out the first guy, take out the guys basically from the left all the way slowly over to the right, though it is difficult to take out that final guy sometimes uh, because, of course, he's going to be sped up. Uh, but if you do the right kind of drop or if you wait for one of the flame bubbles, uh, you can take him out safely. Level 40 is all of these Zen guys. You can pretty much just wait in this left 
corner and take out most of them. We end up having one of those firecrackers also up here, but I was only one guy left before I would have beaten level anyway, but still. Level 41 has a whole bunch of whales in a very small area. Uh, if you can get one of the flame bubbles to appear immediately, hit it so that you can at least do uh, some damage to the whales as they immediately start bouncing. Not surprising, since we've had the Zen guys being replaced by the High Gons for the High Gon themed level, we have all the Zen guys hanging out. Still waiting for that elusive other E to show up so we can at least get Extend during the course of the second quest, though it doesn't really do anything other than giving us that extra life. This level is always such a pain to try to hit these guys, lining up the lightning bolts, just trying to barely hit them, and finally at least I was able to do it before uh, we ended up getting chased down, but I, like I said, first time around, don't like these levels, second time around, still don't like these levels. We go from the whining to an SOS, uh, here we have a couple of the Zen guys on the bottom part, and a few pole poles floating around, pretty simple level to beat though. Here we have the rematch against the Coily stage, the giant version of Coily taking up most of the room along with a whole bunch of the Coilies kind of just bouncing everywhere. Just like before, they can be sometimes difficult to actually track fully down, but uh, thankfully I'm able to do so and we're moving on to 46. Level 46, also known as Ouch. Plenty of the Coilies just kind of hopping in a row. You have to be careful, though, if you shoot too many of them and don't pop them. Uh, you just have a lot of angry Coilies going everywhere, which is not a good thing. I like the uh, cutter change here for level 47, I think it looks a lot better here than it did during the first quest. Take out all the enemies on the left side, you can drop the fire if you want to do that, and then we're going to head to the right and wait for some of the other enemies to kind of work their way up and finish them off. The very interesting level 48, just the three enemies on both sides again. And I end up getting another pretty much useless item again, the wine glass. Last time it was a mushroom, but always there's speed shoes. It seems like almost every time you come to level 48, there's speed shoes end up appearing. Level 49 is when the new enemies are introduced originally, uh, but this time we still have the invaders that are uh, first kind of brought in during this part. Level 50, the invader pyramid. Start off by taking out the guy on the left and then work your way slowly up. You gotta be careful, make sure that you're fully in whatever one you're trying to get to. We're gonna take out the guy in the center, doing the uh, kind of jump halfway through the wall there, and then finish up the last two here. Level 51 originally was all the drunks, but this time we now have all the stoners that have replaced them. Sometimes they don't like to pop out of the box, you have to get above 
their boxes onto the top platforms, and that's usually what ends up triggering them to actually jump out of them. Level 52 is usually pretty fun. We're going to drop down, take out the invader, and then drop into the uh, bubble of water and take out most of the rest of the enemies. Sometimes one guy can be a little bit annoying, so I'll wait for him to come down and finish him off that way. Level 53, all the enemies kind of group up in the center, giving me a pretty decent opportunity to kind of do a run and fire method. Just have to kind of wait for the invader to fall down to finish up things. Level 54, you are just filled with a bunch of the stoners and a couple of drunks above us. It can be difficult, of course, we're going to jump up here, just be very careful, especially with this angry stoner uh, that I had to deal with as well. But thankfully, the platform is pretty big, so you usually don't end up getting cornered too bad, uh, but it doesn't mean you can't make a mistake, like I did accidentally running into this enemy. Level 55, dropping all the high guns down, and then a few drunks start piling in as well. Uh, it doesn't take more than a few moments, though, to finish up every enemy in this stage. Just like last time when we got to level 56, it's like you're preparing for the absolute worst right after this with level 57. And whether it be the first quest or the second quest, it's pretty much still an absolute pain to try to beat level 57, especially when you're just starting to play the game for the first couple of times. The level's identical though, same enemies, same enemy placements, uh, just the color schemes changed up. We're going to take out the whale first, and then immediately start firing all those bubbles into the center. Remember, you kind of want to have some of the bubbles, you can kind of get like barely an edge of them. And if you do it just right, you should be able to kind of bounce up multiple bubbles in a row, and hopefully be able to get on top, where you should be able to finish off all the invaders. With level 57 done, it's pretty much a cakewalk from here on out. Just a couple of more small annoying levels here and there. As I take out all these enemies easily, a heart did appear in the upper left corner that I could have grabbed to make things easier, but I was already done with the stage before that thing even had a chance to start blinking. The mysterious FA-10 level. Pretty much just a big block that we're going to stand on, and most enemies are going to fall through the pits or just fly up towards us, so it's a pretty good vantage point as far as taking out most of them. Level 60 is identical from the first quest. You have the invaders coming down. Uh, I'm going to do the more heads-on approach, the more difficult approach for this run. Uh, I recommend, though, timing the fall through the one pit, which will help you kind of get a jump on them and start being able to chase down the invaders to finish them off. And of course, the giant invader level right after that, which can be difficult, but not nearly as bad as that one later on. Take out all the uh, stragglers that are outside of these little, like, pits. And of course, these guys are stuck. They can't move, but we gotta kinda put them out of their misery. Uh, just kinda make sure you're standing safely on this platform. Uh, it can be difficult sometimes to get underneath them, especially when he's mad. Uh, and you wanna do so quickly before, of course, you end up getting chased down. Level 62 here can be a little bit difficult because of the invaders. Uh, starting off by going to the left side, I'm able to kind of cut one off, uh, but then they start going to the opposite, and with the other enemies, it can sometimes be difficult to catch up to them. Level 
Level 63, of course, the easy version of level 57, as I like to joke. Just kind of bounce my way up and take out the invaders pretty simply. Time for the big, giant faucet of a level. I'm going to go up here, though, and take out the invaders the uh, much more uh, difficult way, as opposed to the easy way that I did it during the uh, first quest, which is actually what I recommend, by the way, but here I do things a little bit different. For level 65, as we start off, we're going to take out the stoner on the left side. The one on the right will start coming towards us. We'll take him out. And then jump up here, watching out for the invader lasers. Uh, and then kind of like slowly manipulate our way, kind of short jumps so that we can get on this platform. Uh, take out all the invaders and then just finish off the other guys. Because of the kind of confusing nature of level 66, you can of course hit the uh, fire bubbles if you want to, or just kind of walk around the uh, bottom portion of the level, and you'll probably be able to take out most enemies. Level 67, another one that's kind of similar in some ways to level 57, but we're going to set that fire off to uh, finish them all off in just a matter of seconds. Always fun level 68, start off by bouncing up and kind of have to just slowly move over just a little bit to the right as you're falling, try to take out the coily as well as the invader. I get lucky that I end up getting the fire wand. You have a limited number of fireballs you can fire out, and it does go between levels. So you don't want to be an idiot like I am most of the time and just keep firing it off. You can take out a good amount of enemies with some nicely timed fireballs and complete several levels in a row while using it. For level 70, we're going to just kind of take out the coilies and the a little bit more tough way, I guess, by just kind of working our way from the left side to the right side slowly, taking each one out. Level 71, start off by dropping down, and then we're going to wait for the whale to come to me and take him out, before dropping down and taking a chance by taking out this high gun, which would potentially have killed me, and even if he did, as long as I had killed him as well, it would have been, I guess, worth it. We're going to drop down take out the coilies, when I fell, I shot the whale. One thing to keep in mind is if you bubble an enemy and they're floating upwards and there's an open gap, when that bubble bursts, they have to fall straight down and eventually make contact with something before they're going to be able to start like doing their normal cycle of things. So you can take advantage of this sometimes uh, in levels by hitting multiple enemies and as they're falling back down as they burst, gives you an easy opportunity to kind of hit like very easy targets. High tech is always a fun one with all the coilies kind of bouncing around. Uh, it's kind of unpredictable also sometimes during this, but thankfully they uh, don't end up getting the best of me. For level 73, we're going to jump up here. We can take out the first stoner and then jump up here and take out the coily. As we're taking out these first couple of enemies, you may be able to hit one of the water bubbles and take out a couple of guys, but in this case I end up hitting one of the lightning bolts and take out a few guys, which was completely coincidental. And then I'm going to go over here, hitting another one of the water bubbles to drown the one stoner that was kind of like stuck, and now I just got to finish off the last flying guy. Easier said than done sometimes, but thankfully, I finally am able to track them down. 
Level 74, a little bit difficult compared to last time because you have a tougher enemy, but still very easy. Just kind of run across and easily take him out. Level 75, filled with stoners dropping in from both left and right side. Take out the first two on the bottom, and then uh, get ready for the other ones as they drop in. Usually easy to take care of, and you just kind of go to these little pockets on the left and right to finish off the last two. share of great two-player experiences on the NES in general, I argue that Bubble Bobble is one of the best. Not only is it a really fun game, it's very accessible. Anyone can pretty much pick up and start to learn the ideas of what's going on with Bubble Bobble. Back to level 77, the room that kind of prepares us for the one much later on in the bonus stages. Though there are plenty of elements to kind of help us take out some of them, so it's a pretty fun stage overall. In level 78, be very careful of the invaders. You can stand on the left side here, and you can take out a lot of them as they kind of bounce down. There will be a couple, of course, that end up still kind of escaping, uh, and you can kind of either chase them down. In this case, I end up getting a heart, but it won't be too difficult to kind of finish them off. Level 79, start off by bouncing up. This one is a bit of a pain stage as we're gonna stop on down here, take out the pull pole, and do the same to the two on the left and right side here. Uh, sometimes you may have to wait or you can just drop down when the timing's right, then take out the top two guys and finally the bottom two invaders just like we did the first time around. Time for some more show Taro, and we have a whole bunch of the high guns that are uh, attacking us this. This is pretty difficult though, uh, you can end up using the fire if you can get it up there, that will help, or a nice timed lightning bolt can still do a pretty good amount of damage. The dreaded level 81. I still can't stand this stage, though I still thought it looked really cool in this version, like kind of like bone almost. So it's kind of like a whole giant thing made of bones. Now I'm gonna stand here, wait for him to come up, and then I'm gonna fire my few bubbles that jump up here into this little crevice so that I'm safe and then start working my way through, taking out the ones on the left. If these flying guys come near me, I can take them out. If not, I'll wait till I'm done everything else. I'm not fast enough, though, and I ended up falling, so I kind of have to, like, wing it by doing a weird bubble bounce that I'm lucky hits the invader, uh, but thankfully I'm still able to beat the level. For level 82, you have all the high guns. A few of them will eventually pop out as we start to kind of climb up the center, uh, which is not a smart move to do necessarily. That's the difficult part. When you make it to the top, that will make all the other enemies kind of like pop out, so then you have to fall back down so you can finish them all off. Be careful in level 83, the invader in the center part, and all the high guns coming down on the left side first, and then we're going to head over to the right side. Of course, if you take them all out first, the invader's going to be quite mad, so getting that final hit on him can be very difficult. Thank you. 
just like before with level 84, we're gonna start off on the left side, wait for the first couple, and then we can kinda drop down here, and the rest of the invaders will pretty much come to us. Just be careful that when they fall, that they're not having them on the both left and right side that you end up being able to easily dodge out of the way of them and the lasers. Good old PMGC, where it just allows us to jump up quickly and take out a whole bunch of invaders in just a couple of seconds. Traveling back to the Darius level, and uh, this one, the color scheme is quite a, a bright one, that is for uh, sure. It's an interesting color scheme they chose for this level. Right after that, though, we have the STA room filled with plenty of beluga whales that are going to bounce their way around. I'm surprised that we haven't still come across the other E that we need in order to do the extend. Keep getting the same letters, which do give us bonus points, I'm pretty sure, but other than that, like, end up not really being that helpful. For level 88, this time unfortunately the fire ends up appearing on the right side, so I kind of have to work, work my way over, which can be difficult. Try to like slowly push the little bubble around, and then that way I can kind of finish off the journey this way. Either way, once it finally gets to the center, which the game doesn't give me much time to do, I'm able to drop that flame down into the pit, and goodbye all those poor, poor enemies. Start off by climbing up in level 89, there's a bunch of the drunkards that are going to be waiting for you. We're just going to kind of bounce off, and as soon as you put them in a bubble, they immediately end up bursting. And unfortunately, because of that, along with them throwing some bottles, I do end up losing a life. Level number 90, we're just going to bounce up the left side, take out all the invaders first, and then kind of float our way back over the top in order to take out the enemy we kind of left behind a few moments ago. It can be difficult sometimes in level 91 to actually get the fires to go down into these little openings. As level number 92 begins, all the Zen guys fall into place. We're gonna work our way over, take out a couple, and try to get to the water. This way we're able to kind of run over most of them with only a couple of them surviving. Also, apparently, I ended up grabbing one of the fireball abilities, so I'm going to use that to my advantage to help me out. Level number 93, all the enemies kind of fall in, and I'm able to use one fireball and almost get rid of every one of them. For KZM, it's pretty much more of the same. I still have the fireball, so might as well use more of it and help me take out even more of the Zen guys easily. Level number 95, you can wait for the whale to kind of come up, or you can kind of just go up right to the top and just stay on the left side, and you can slowly pick off each of the enemies without having to get too close to them.
Of course, my least favorite level here, the invaders coming in. I'm gonna do my best to try to take out the first three before they even get into the little thing. Now I just gotta focus on the uh, ones on the right side, uh, which thankfully actually goes pretty well this time. Sometimes it goes really well, and other times it's an absolute disaster. Level number 97, as soon as you drop in, just give it a few moments, the enemies above will start to fall down, and when they do, this gives you plenty of opportunity to easily pick them all off. You can also use one of the electric bubbles if you end up getting one of those to appear as well. The last two enemies, though, inside can be difficult because they won't end up jumping out because it's too high for them to jump over, uh, and getting the lightning bolts to go where you need them to doesn't always work, so sometimes you'll have to bounce off one of your bubbles to get up there and take them out. Level number 98, the welcome level, as all of the high gons fall in, take out all of them pretty simply, uh, as we prepare for the wonderful gauntlet that is level 99 to go get the crystal for a second time. Just like before, I'm going to quickly run up, take out a couple of enemies, uh, don't take out everyone just in case, because sometimes things can happen. We're going to jump over using uh, this flame bubble, grab that crystal, bounce right back up, and kind of drop on down, just kind of barely touching left on the D-pad right as we enter the square, and we have successfully hit the warp for a second time, and it's time now just for the final last few stages of the game. Level A0 has the Kazuya written in it. You also have some flame bubbles. One of the giant uh, books that cause earthquakes ends up appearing, which ends up being a little bit of a pain to get to, and I didn't even notice it, unfortunately, until it was just about to disappear. That's just something that ends up happening sometimes. An item ends up showing up while you're in the heat of everything, and you end up missing it. Level A1 has all the high guns dropping in to say hello. Thankfully, we can take out most of them as they just kind of run down the first few platforms. One of the hearts shows up, so that helps me finish off the last two. A-2, more of the same of these guys falling in, though this time we of course have the big separated platforms that they're going to slowly jump up. When you get a lot of them on one platform, of course it's very difficult to deal with them because of all the fireballs that are just going to come shooting your way. For A-3, you have more of them kind of falling down these little steps. Hang near the bottom, you can get the kind of ones on the far left destroy all them, and then drop on down to try to take out the ones on the right. Unfortunately, I dropped down a little too early, though, and I end up getting another one of my lives taken. Thankfully, A4 is pretty easy. Just be careful of the uh, beer bottles that can be still thrown your way while you're hanging out on this uh, far left side, but it is still pretty safe to deal with these guys. A5 is that kind of weird butterfly-like shape. The mushroom ends up appearing, which is one of the worst items in the game. It gives you like 200 points, and it counts in some of the spots of like special items. One of the best of all time, A6, just has us falling into oblivion. Thankfully, you can use the elements to kind of help you out. It, it is actually a little bit of a challenge and difficult to kind of avoid getting hit by certain enemies during this. You don't have a lot of freedom of movement in order to try to get around some of them.
A7 has one of the most blinding looking levels in the game. If you had like a big giant screen TV and you stare too close to this one, you may actually go blind from this pattern. We're also going to use the water bubbles to, of course, go down each of the paths, one on the left side and hit one on the right side. That's all you need to do, and you should be able to clear out both sides. We are nearing the end here. I'm surprised I still didn't get another one of those E's. Pretty easy level though, just kind of don't go too far up. If you kind of hang a little bit low, so there's still a few things around you, you kind of easily drop off the platforms. It's a nice safe spot for you to be. Once the enemies kind of spread out a little bit more though, if you want to start chasing them down, then you'll have the option after things are thinned out a bit. Level A9 is more of the drunkards as we get dropped in. Pretty simple though. Uh, a couple of them though can get in kind of like weird locations by just their jumping, uh, but thankfully usually pretty easy to beat. The weird giant maze-like level in B0, we're gonna quickly bounce up the bubbles. You gotta be persistent, the first couple ones get kinda like pulled towards the ground, which is a bit annoying. Once you're finally up though, kinda just slowly take your time, most of the enemies are coming your way. In fact, this is easier than the first time around because we end up having Zen guys instead of the fireball throwing uh, high guns. B1 is, once again, the giant joystick, this time around with a weird kind of color thing going on here. Uh, thankfully, though, it's just the Zen robots, which are pretty easy to deal with. I'm going to try to avoid this shoe, though. I don't want to get the shoe. Uh, pretty much going to have to sacrifice a life at that point uh, during the uh, next level, and especially right here, because I would end up getting the shoe, and it would just cause me to fall so fast, I would land on top of the Zen guys. Finally, B2, the giant drunkard, but instead of the drunks trying to defend their idol here, instead it's the Huygens. I kind of get a bunch of them piled up in one little spot there, but once they're all done, it's time for the final boss. And thankfully, I still have one extra life, so as long as I don't die, I can still bring back my friend and be able to get the best ending to the game. Just like before, as soon as the battle begins, we're going to climb up and grab ourselves the tonic. This allows us to, of course, throw out a ton of these lightning bolt bubbles and then just pop the crap out of them, sending them flying towards this guy. Like I mentioned before, in the first battle against him, the shots he's throwing out are kind of timed. So after a few seconds, he's going to throw out another set, no matter where he ends up being on screen. So keep that in mind and make sure you're not too close to him at any given point. If you get really good at the timing of the bubble throwing, you can get like him pretty much kind of stuck and... Uh, you can end up kind of just completely stun-locking and draining his health in just a matter of seconds if you're, like, really, really good at managing the bubbles. The boss fight, though, is pretty much more of the same. The only real major difference is that he has 20 more hit points. Other than that, I really don't think there's any difference during this fight. After many, many, many years of facing off against him and kind of getting used to when I should run to the one side, when should I stay on the other side, you eventually start to kind of really understand this fight and it becomes a, a breeze as it goes on. 
Once we deliver the final hit though, make sure you don't pop him until you've summoned the second player. Then enjoy the best ending to Bubble Bobble on the NES. So there you have it guys, the best ending, the bubble bobble in the first scenario you save your girlfriends, in the second scenario you save your parents. I didn't even know that was a thing that was really going on, but that's what ends up happening. You also get the monster roll call. Uh, if you go back and look at that again, you can kind of see the names uh, being kind of really out of place as far as the way they ended up putting them uh, into the game. Like I said, the enemies in general just have a bunch of different names for each and every one of them. Bubble Bobble, though, of course, is one of the all-time classic two-player games. Single-player game is still a lot of fun. And if you've never played it, especially with a friend, I highly recommend checking out Bubble Bobble. However, don't bother with Bubble Bobble 2 for the NES. It's a two-player experience, but you take turns instead of co-op playing together. But either way, guys, it's going to wrap up this episode of Play It Through. I like to thank you for watching, and of course, I hope you enjoyed.